New Orleans Saints offensive coordinator Clint Kubiak talks leadership on offense and the play of Tulsa Fawaga. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are here at New Orleans Football as the channel. The backdrop straight from Airline Drive, Clint Kubiak, Saints offensive coordinator, and really kind of the Saints savior, the king of New Orleans, a lot of people would say. Uh, he's going to talk to us. Now, Clint Kubiak is a household name right now. Clint Kubiak went from being called Cliff Kubiak by Rich Eisen to being the talk of the town, the bell of the ball. I mean, Clint Kubiak now is the number one play caller, offensive coordinator in the NFL right now. Two weeks in and uh, headed to the Dome, headed to a game against the Philadelphia Eagles. So I'm excited to hear what he has to say. We're going to react like only we can do. All right, Raven, you are. Real quick, I just want to show you all something. So look at this, look at this man right here, and then look at this, look at this image right here. This picture that I'm showing you is from uh, Clint Kubiak's debut interview, his introduction interview after being hired as New Orleans Saints offensive coordinator. This isn't ten years apart. These photos aren't in between, you know, uh, deployment to the Vietnam War. I mean, th these pictures are a couple months apart. The fella standing before you is, I mean, you can tell. He has completely given up on everything except ball. He has given up on everything except uh, the NFL, on the New Orleans Saints, on offense. I mean, look at what we have going on here. It's a cross of, of Mark Wahlberg and the perfect storm. Uh, me, I mean, it's just an unbelievable dedication. And this is what you want. This is what you want in your coordinators. Has Clint Kubiak left the building? I don't, I have no idea. Guessing by this, I wouldn't think so. I mean, he, he's in mid-season form and it's week three. I love it. Can he mentally withstand this level of dedication? I don't know, but I love what I'm seeing so far. Clint, are you just surprised at how, I guess, easy it has looked for you guys two, for two weeks? Oh, I don't think he's going to like that question. You never want to hear... Like, I mean, that's got to be number one on what a coach doesn't want to hear is that things are coming easy. So I got a feeling he's going to reframe this real quick to make sure that his team and everyone else understands, like, this ain't easy. It's, not easy. Uh, it's a, been two games, you know, so there's, I think our guys have done a good job to start it off with. We know we have a long road ahead, a lot of football left. Um, pleased with our effort early, but uh, not satisfied. What, what else are you pleased with besides the effort? What, what are you pleased with what your offense is doing? It's almost comical at this point that every time we do one of these videos, the flyover, the airplane, the flyover thing happens. I mean, this is crazy. It's it's we're 27 seconds into this video, and I feel like I'm starting a Call of Duty Warzone map. Uh, just the leadership of our guys. You know, our best players are, are playing well right now. They're practicing hard. When your best players are your hardest workers, then you're gonna have you're gonna have uh, you know a good group, and that's that's been the case thus far. Clint, kind of a non-football question, but how would you describe you? Um, ball Crazy question. So I don't know if y'all heard that because of the uh, the B-52, but question was, non-football question, how would you describe you? That's a very difficult question just for anybody to ask, especially just kind of like boom on the spot. Never even, I, the last thing he's thinking about, the last thing Clint Kubiak is thinking about going into this interview is that he may be taking a personality quiz uh, by the by this ombre. I'll coach the Saints. <laughs> there you go. There you go, baby. No, I'm not giving you much there. Um, yeah. Um, I'd say that, uh, you know, I'm a Christian, I'm a dad, and then somewhere way down the line, I'm a football coach. I think Derek said, you know, you just all ball all the time. I mean, what do you do to unwind it? Would you have a hobby if there isn't? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, sometime after the season. Figure that out. I love this guy. I mean, I'll tell you that right now. I'll, I'll tell you that right now. I love this guy. I mean, would you have a hobby? Yeah, I'd have a hobby, but it's going to have to wait until after the season. God, I mean, what a, what a, what a human being. Think about what we were stuck with last year. Think about some of the scrubs that we interviewed and we could have been, we could have hired. And we landed on this guy. I mean, Mickey Loomis, stand up, son. Clint, um, it, it seems like you have a lot of uses for, for Alvin Kamara. Is that something you recognized when you studied the tape of this team even before you started working with him? Like, when did you realize how, how, how much volume you guys wanted to give him in so many different ways? Well, I mean, I would give a lot of credit to the 
to the offensive staff. I mean, they've, they've been really creative in getting him involved. And, uh, you know, I think anyone that's watched television the last 10 years, you see Alvin Kamara and I've played against him. And uh, I was on the other end of that Christmas Day game. So um, he's he's an electric player. So he's, we got to get him the ball as much as we can. True. And he does a good job of getting him the ball in different directions. Like, like it's one thing to just force feed a good player the ball. You know, like we've seen in the past where Kamara just gets dump offs in the flats and he's expected to create and make good things happen. But to go a step further and to make sure he gets the ball, but also make sure that he gets it in advantageous you know, areas for him as a player, that's a whole other level. And that's exactly what Kubiak is doing. And it's not just for Kamara, it's for everyone on the offense. And it's also with the members of the offensive line where – you know, it's easy to say, get get Alvin Kamara the ball, get Chris Olave the ball, get Taysom Hill the ball, but how do you find those advantageous positions? How do you find uh, the space, or how do you find the, the – how do you play on the strengths of an offensive lineman? And we've seen Clint Kubiak able to do that. Uh, and whether that's – whether you think that's masking the offensive line or hiding an offensive line, whatever. But he's getting the most out of quite literally every single player on the offense right now. I mean, what's kind of going through your mind when you're dialing up these plays and like everything is working? I mean, are you, yeah. well, you get a chance to appreciate it. Yeah, I'm just. Uh, I think in the moment we're just we, we're so focused on the job that we got to do, and um, I think what goes through our mind is you know the next play, you know, and how can how can we done the last play better, and how can we. Um, how can we improve our next series? So I think that's what's great about our coaching staff and our players is, you know, they're very detail oriented and they work their tails off and they're and they're not happy with where they are. So you didn't hit the Michael Jackson up there? I did not. No, that's that would not be me. But uh, I'm happy that our players are excited and having fun because that's what this game's about. It's a fun game, and you know when they're having success, and I want them want them to celebrate, want them to have fun. So he's talking about Michael Jackson and Derek Carr celebration and, you know, doing the hee-hee. Derek Carr was fined by the NFL $14,000 for that. Is that not the craziest thing you've ever heard, ladies and gentlemen? Michael Jackson performed at the Super Bowl. And uh, there was a, I think it was Cat Terrell or somebody mentioned this, but Michael Jackson did that nine times during the Super Bowl halftime show. Like, it's his signature move. What, like, what's going on here? How, how is it that Derek Carr has faced more punishment for an end zone celebration than Michael Jackson faced for anything he did in his life? I mean, come on, ladies and gentlemen. Is it not ridiculous? Goodell, figure it out. Are you having a lot of fun with this? Yeah, it's been a solid start. And um, I'm, I think it's been really cool just the, the people that, that I get to be around, you know, Coach Allen and Mickey Loomis and Rick Dennison and Clancy Barone. Our, I can name our whole offensive coaching staff. Those guys – have been really impressive and uh, and they they have not gotten enough credit but none of us want the credit because we all know what's ahead of us you know we got a we got a lot of football ahead and um, we've done some good things thus far but we all know that you know it's we're two games into this thing so we got to stay humble stay hungry and if we do that we'll be all right Clint? I, I do kind of cringe at these questions not not all the questions but the questions about are you having fun is this fun are you proud are you this it's like the Saints have been really, really good so far. No doubt about that. And I'm as excited as anybody else. But this is 2 of 17. You know, like, we're not... These are the kind of questions you would get asked after you clinch the one seed, after you clinch a, the division, after you... Like, these are kind of the conversations you have, like, during Super Bowl week. The fact that he's getting asked, are you having fun? Are you, are you doing all this stuff? Two two weeks in, leading up to the Philadelphia Eagles is is pretty wild, honestly. And two weeks away from prime time against the Chiefs, you you, you go. I mean, I know this is a very on the one side of things, but you go two and fifteen. No one's asking you these questions, right? Like you're a long way away from where you want to go. So, and I don't. The reporters may have a different vibe. Than the team or all that, but if I if I was co if I was Dennis Allen and I heard any of this kind of talk in the locker room, I would be concerned. I would be really concerned. Like Nick Saban always talked about how uh, positive, you know, like positive news articles or whatever is rat poison. 
because the players start believing it. They start relaxing. They start taking, you know, they don't have that edge. I'm not saying the players do. I'm not saying that I think that's possible at all, but I am kind of surprised at the overall tone of these questions. Uh, it's, I mean, I guess it one, on one hand, it shows you how hungry the fan base is and the reporters are and the media is for positivity because this team has been kind of plagued by negativity and toxicity uh, over the last couple of years. So maybe just like this, even though it's been 14 days, just the fact that it's good vibes, happy times, uh, you know, happy days, shout out Henry Winkler. The the fact that one of my favorite shows growing up, by the way, was Happy Days. Uh, I don't know why the hell I was watching it because you know, I'm not that old, but I loved it. Love the show. Love the show. You know how like you, when you you remember some like your favorite shows like that that are your first favorite shows. Remember like Happy Days. I remember the old uh, Adam West Batman show, um, and then obviously like Ninja Turtle stuff like that. But for some reason, Happy Days snuck in there. Uh, but all that to say, it has been two games. So I'm sure Kubiak to an extent is kind of concerned hearing that line of questioning. The, a lot of these systems like to use heavier personnel. Like, what advantages do you guys get as, as an offense going against a defense that's like in base and you know maybe going heavier more than, than some other systems? I think it's not so much that as just much as like what is our, what is our strengths. You know, I think we have some really talented football players that you know they're not the skill players all the time. You know, we got some guys like Adam Prentice, guys like Jawan. Um, you know, we got really talented big men you know, that deserve to be on the field and getting their reps too. So it's probably less about as far as what personnel we're putting on the field, as far as it's more about, you know, how do we get our best players involved in the game plan and use, use the, the whole roster on game day. What have you noticed from Fuaga's guys like intelligence, like this Patrick, like kind of singled out though, on that screenplay, something he recognized pre-snap? Yeah. What have your impressions been of? Um, I think that's a great point. I, I think when you just think about football intelligence, guys that just that just get it, you know, he he really stands out. And that it was that way in the draft process, and it was that way early on. You know, you, you move the guy to left tackle on his first day here, and um, he just kind of fit right in. And you know, when when the picture changes, he doesn't flinch. So I think um, it's probably a lot of credit that needs to be given to you know, the way he was coached at in Oregon, you know, Oregon State, because a very similar scheme, and uh, he had a lot of bank reps in some of the things we were asking him to do. Is it almost identical as far as scheme? Uh, shout out to Oregon State, no doubt about it. But uh, you got to feel real good, Talise Fuaga, how he's looked as far as a rookie offensive lineman. I mean, I don't, I don't want to get ahead of myself here, but I think the Saints are okay at left tackle for the foreseeable future. Normal for rookies to point out certain stuff like that you've been around or yeah. left alignment? Yeah, the, the good ones for sure, definitely. Clint, is there anything uh, like beyond the obvious Rashid speed that makes him so good on those vertical rounds? Um, yeah, I think I've said this before about him, and it's just it's really the joy of playing the game. Like he brings so much joy to the game, and he gets he gets excited to make a play, and he gets excited when his teammates make plays, and he's an unselfish guy. Um, so. You know, obviously that's a big part of his game that he's that he's showed thus far, and there's there's so much more that that uh, that he's shown in practice. So, um, you know, not surprised by his success because he he really practiced his tail off this offseason. You reference joy. You reference fun. Like the guys play better when they're when they're having fun. Oh, yeah, like is that something sure. that's like important to cultivate that culture? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And you know, it's it's that's easy when when you're having success. Yeah. So we'll find out what our character is when it doesn't go that way. And. It's going to happen in the NFL that way. So that's why it's important for us to just just keep going about our daily business and focusing on the task at hand. I mean, no doubt about it. Like You, you watch, and we covered the team extensively last year. And, man, I mean, just the, just the body language, the vibe, the interviews, the look, like everything about the team is totally different. I think it's interesting, too, where – it's the same. It's the exact same roster, for the most part. I mean, you you are. There are a few. There's a handful of people who are not on the team this year that were on the team last year. There's more coaches, honestly, than than players that aren't on the team. But you know, we did so many interviews, or we recapped so many interviews where you know the players were just down. The players were frustrated. The player the players were. 
you know, there, there was so much talk about infighting and, and a toxic kind of locker room and clicks. And there was talk about, you know, players not doing the work. And, and we even heard, I mean, we even heard stories about how players were intentionally parking in like the wrong parking spots and all kinds. Of, I mean, it was just a mess, an absolute mess. And the design and the success of the offense and the touchdowns and the points and all of that, that's cool to talk about. And that's the headlines. But the fact that the culture has shifted, I mean, I, I don't know if it's, if we give all the credit to Kubiak and Chinoco and kind of this younger, energetic, innovative, creative kind of staff coming in and, and the offense being good. So the defense is you know, rejuvenated because obviously the defense is, when the defense gets to fly around and do all that stuff, they feel better. So I don't know if it's just a domino effect of that or... I don't know, but there is no doubt about it, a marked difference in the just the vibe surrounding the team. Through the first two games of the season, like how do you think that Chris Olave has like, executed and everything you've Olave's been to good. so far? Olave has been really good. I thought he's been phenomenal. Yeah. Like, like I told you guys before, I think I told you this, I don't remember, but he was our, he was our Iron Man in training camp. You know, he did not miss a practice. So I've seen improvement and uh, I've seen a guy that really – that is a really bright football player. So you can do a lot with, with bright players, and we have a lot of those on offense. Um, so I think he's just one, one of many that is, uh, you know, just done everything we've asked him to do, and and he knows that there's plenty more in the tank for him. Yeah, I mean, Olave, he's, I'm sure if you just go, like I remember after week one, we had a lot of people saying, like, Olave's, Olave was, was not impactful. Olave didn't do anything this game, blah, blah, blah. And we had to kind of, we had to kind of ease off of that and, and explain how Alave was really good, even though we only had two targets on two receptions. But Alave has been fantastic. I think if you do the all twenty-two and you go and grade, you know, if you want to, if you want to go grade his performance over the last uh, two weeks, I think you'd give him an A plus. I mean, he's been fantastic. And sometimes it's not all about receptions and yards and touchdowns. Sometimes it's about more. Uh, and Alave is certainly doing the more. I have no doubt in my mind. If called upon, he can easily give you an eight catch 120 yard game no doubt about it but uh luckily for the saints right now it's not it's not called upon we, we can spread the ball out uh, around and, and have success so olave has been really good I, I, I have been very impressed with chris olave over two weeks thank you all right thank you. there you go king of the universe right there i mean that's my president uh, that's what i'm voting for uh, i mean this this guy round of applause ladies and gentlemen get on down to the comments below let me know what you thought about this. We are headed straight towards the Superdome, straight towards a matchup with the Philadelphia Eagles. We'll be covering it, obviously, uh, all day, all night, all morning, leading up to the game. And then we'll be recapping and reviewing after the game. Does the content ever stop? The answer to that is no. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video.